Another show of defiance on the streets of Iran, met by security forces firing tear gas, beating protesters. This just a day after the top commander of Iran's Revolutionary Guard warned protesters to stop. The demonstrations triggered by the death of Masa Amini. She died last month in custody, arrested for allegedly not wearing her head covering properly. This weekend, tens of thousands of Canadians created a human chain, a symbol of solidarity, from St. John's to Vancouver, where more than 15,000 joined hands along the Lionsgate Bridge. Since I was lucky to be able to escape from Iran, but as soon I landed in Canada, Vancouver, I decided to advocate for human rights, for the women rights, and for the people who were not as lucky as I was. Protesters filled a park in Edmonton. In Calgary, they lined a riverbank with photos of those imprisoned by the regime. In Winnipeg, the chain stretched in front of the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. In Toronto, tens of thousands filled Young Street. We are trying to just echo in their voice here in Canada because we are in a safe place. And the Prime Minister joined a rally in Ottawa. We will continue to do everything we can to stand against the Iranian regime. There's pressure now for Iran to be removed from the UN's Commission on the Status of Women. Female politicians have signed an open letter, including Canada's Foreign Affairs Minister. I will be announcing new sanctions very soon, and we need to keep the momentum. All this growing support from the global community could have an impact inside Iran. It's doing a lot. I think it's amazing. I think we're not even quite aware of how significant this movement is. As the peaceful rallies continue in Canada, in Iran, according to rights groups, at least 270 protesters have now been killed, 14,000 have been arrested. Marina von Stackelberg, CBC News, Ottawa.